Hey guys, Carlo Biasucci here. I want to talk to you this week about what makes great companies. So Jim Collins wrote a book a few years ago that you may have read called Good to Great. And fantastic book. Many, many insights gained from that. There's a more recent uh, sort of short little book that goes along with that. And it's called Turning the Flywheel. And also by Jim Collins. And it goes with Good to Great. And it digs in on one particular concept which is the flywheel concept. And I wanna get into that today because understanding this really, I think, gives you a fantastic framework on how to think about building your practice, building your business, really building, building any business in terms of, you know, how do the, the, do the pieces flow together? How does this thing actually work? What are the components that I'm actually trying to create to feed on each other so this thing starts to happen. I think this works perfectly with our philosophy of building a self-operating practice. So I wanna dig into this a bit. If you do wanna read this, it's a really short read. Uh, it's only you know, 30 some odd pages and it's just a companion really for the book Good to Great by Jim Collins, okay? So if you wanna check this out, it's called Turning the Flywheel. Highly, highly recommend it. And so the concept is this, that your practice or your business can be defined or broken down into certain steps, key components that really everything else uh, builds into. And let's look at this as an example. So the best way to explain this as an example. So I've, I've written down here for you the flywheel for Amazon.com. This is the best way to understand it. So Amazon works like this, basically. Their key pieces look like so. So first, lower prices on more offerings, which creates increased customer visits, which then creates the ability to attract third-party sellers, right? And Amazon, if you've been paying attention, is growing hugely in third-party sellers selling on their platform. That allows them to expand their store, expand, dis um, extend distribution, which then allows them to grow revenue per fixed cost, so increasing profitability over time. And if you've been studying Amazon for a while, Amazon wasn't profitable for the better part of their existence, right? It's only now that things are starting to change. And so this is how their business process works. And it really is like a flywheel. It's like you're basically trying to get this thing into a momentum, right? To create a solid momentum. So at first, when you, when you set out to create, you know, what is the flywheel for my business or my dental practice? What does that look like? And when you look at it, at first, it's like you're just trying to get this thing to turn, right? You're trying to get this thing to really sync up and start to be fluid. As that happens, you know, the thing you need to pay attention to is not to mess with it, okay? Most of us get into shiny object syndrome and we stray from the thing that works. A really great flywheel compounds over time. So in the beginning, you might be turning it, you know, a hundred times, a thousand times. The greatest businesses turn this flywheel billions of times and they don't mess with it. There could be tweaks and we'll talk about that. But the key is, is getting these pieces right and then getting the momentum. Now, each component here is not just a, a next step on a list. Like each of these is a, an inevitable consequence of the step that came before. It's like a chain reaction. So if you nail one component, it pushes you, it propels you to the next component. That's how you want to think about this. It also means if you blow it in any one of these components, then it blows your momentum. So the lowest common denominator sort of sets the speed. So, you know, if we were to grade this, let's say that, you know, in Amazon's business, they were really good at getting lower prices on more offerings. And so we could say they're, they're about an eight out of 10 on this. Increased customer visits was about a seven out of 10. They were doing really well in attracting third party sellers and expanding the store and extending distribution, but their fixed costs, you know, their revenue per fixed cost really just wasn't working out that well. So that's a three out of 10. The whole flywheel momentum would stall at the three out of 10. So the weakest point in the process stall is, it determines what the speed of this is. So it really, you know, to get momentum in a business, the thing that needs to happen is 
this, the, every piece of the puzzle, every piece of the flywheel has to be running at maximum potential. We need to really be like digging into making sure that we're executing at the, at the highest level in each area. So once you get the flywheel right, then the question becomes, how or what do we need to do better to accelerate momentum? So you need to, over time, you need to sustain this, like don't mess with it, but you also want to renew it. So you want to look at each of these areas and think, how can I do this better? What could I do better to, uh, to this particular thing, to, to lower prices on more offerings? So let's take this to dental now because it's easier to talk about what we know. Let's jump into how does this apply to a dental practice? Some of you are probably wondering that right now. <clears throat> so here's how it applies to a dental office. A dental office, average office flywheel is going to look like this. Okay, <clears throat> Attract new patients. Then deliver and wow, so deliver your service and wow the patient. Then get referrals, right? We want to uh, multiply the patient. And then repeat business, right? We want them to come back. <clears throat> this is your hygiene area. And then this just keeps going, okay? So if remember what I showed you. If any of these areas are not at top level, the whole thing, the speed stalls at whatever the weakest area is. So if our deliver and wow isn't delivering and wowing, if we have a weak patient experience, everything on this flywheel is gonna run at this speed because this is limiting, okay? Hope that makes sense. <clears throat> so then we need to grow and sustain. We need to sustain and grow at the same time this flywheel. So we don't wanna mess with this, but we wanna constantly ask, what could I be doing better that would increase the momentum? And so you'll have you know, spin-off flywheels. So for example, in the attract patients, well, how do we attract patients? There's a flywheel for that, right? So we might first attract interest, so get someone interested in our practice. Then we might capture their information, so capture the lead. Then what we're gonna work on them, we're gonna nurture the lead, we'll send them information, we'll get them interested in the practice, and eventually convert them to a new patient. This is how we attract patients. So this is a spin-off flywheel, and as we, we want to improve each one of these aspects, we have to look at the processes that make it up. So what can we do to, to the point of attracting patients to actually increase the momentum of the whole thing? Well, it requires looking at all the pieces. And if we can execute everything at the highest level, then we will have great momentum. If our flywheel stalls, it's because we're failing to execute and innovate brilliantly on each on, or on every component. If every component we are executing brilliantly, we are innovating, we are really paying attention, then a flywheel will just go. And that's when you see great momentum in the practice. When all the pieces are put together and running at the highest level. You know, if I ever talk to a dentist who says, I'm just not interested in treating your patients, I told my associates to do it, uh, you know, or I'm not too worried about that particular area of the practice, you know, just let them do what they do. As soon as you take your hands off, the level at which this is being executed or any particular area is being executed will drop a little. That's going to slow the whole thing down, right? So we must always look at how are we getting each of these areas to maximum capacity, maximum potential. And if we can do that, and then we can look at extending our flywheel to include other things. So let's say you know, you've got this and this is going, and maybe you want to look at some other component. Maybe you're, you're a general practice and you want to add like ortho, and you want to create an ortho practice within your practice. I've done that uh, fairly successfully. So how would you do it? Well, you might start with, and in the book, in the flywheel book, it talks about the concept of what they call firing bullets before cannonballs. So what that means is if you already have a successful flywheel and you know something else is sort of like right in your wheelhouse, so we already have a dental practice, we have rooms, let's say, we have capacity, why can't we add uh, ortho practice? Or I was talking to someone this morning actually uh, who has capacity in their office, they're a specialist, <clears throat> but would like to add a GP practice to their practice. Well, that's great, that's another flywheel. So we can extend this flywheel into something else, create an additional flywheel that's sort of a spin-off, 
but we need to start carefully. We fire bullets first, so we test before we fire the cannonball, which is going all in. And the example that they give is like looking at Apple, right? Apple was a computer company. Really, it was a computer company for as long as, as anyone knew Apple. And then they fired some bullets into uh, MP3 players, right? So an iPod came along. Then an iPod Touch came along. Then they fired a bullet into, let's try a phone. Maybe we can make this thing make, work like a phone. And that completely set Apple in a totally different direction. So it was another flywheel. They didn't give up computers, by the way, though. They didn't give it up. So their initial flywheel never changed. They spun off another flywheel. And the thing that we need to pay attention to, though, is you never neglect the original flywheel. When businesses fail, and this is well studied in that book as well, Jim Collins has, uh, cites 25 years of his own research, that when businesses fail, the reason is they abandoned the key principles that made them great. They got away from the flywheel. So you can imagine if you have a fantastic dental practice, right? People are referring to you in droves. Everything's going awesome. You know, I got an awesome staff. You got an incredible culture and a buzz and energy in the office. And you stopped delivering and wowing patients or you stopped paying attention to the experience. And that took a little bit of a dive. Then referrals would take a hit. Then repeat business would take a hit. Eventually, patients would be you know, resistant or hesitant to, to contact your office. Everything takes a dive. So you can't get away from what made you great in the first place. So that's the flywheel principle in a nutshell. Great little read. It's at, at 30 some odd pages. It's a great book. Uh, highly recommend having a look through it. But this is how I would apply this to a dental practice, okay? Just think about your practice in terms of that flywheel and what you can do to execute brilliantly and innovate at each piece and constantly ask yourself the question, what could we do at each piece to increase the momentum of the whole thing? And that will give you lots of new little spin-off ideas, but never, ever, ever neglect what made you great in the first place. So that's the flywheel concept as I would apply it to dental practice. And I hope you found it interesting. So that's it for this week. We'll talk soon.